I had never ceased to be amazed by nature, especially when it comes to flowering plants. There's so many different kinds of flowers, lots of colors, lots of shapes, lots of sizes. There's quite a bit of diversity. There are also different types of flowers. Flowers are, of course, the reproductive parts of plants, and a lot of our flowers, like this okra flower here, have both male and female parts included in the same flower. You can see the little yellow parts along the side here. Those are the anthers, and those are the, the male parts. They release the pollen, and they're here, here in the center, that uh, sort of velvety maroon or purple color. Those are the stigmas, and those lead down to the ovaries where the seeds are produced, and the pollen will get stuck there when those stigmas are receptive and uh, pollination, fertilization of the flower will occur. But a flower like this we call a perfect flower. It has all the parts. There are also examples of plants that have male flowers and female flowers that are separate and sometimes those are on different branches like with our begonias. And then we have examples of flowers or plants we call dioecious, meaning two houses, where you'll have one plant that'll be composed of all male flowers, then you'll have another plant that will be composed of all female flowers. So they have to do some cross-pollinating to uh, develop fruit in that way. If you're familiar with hollies, if you've ever decorated, maybe around Christmas time with hollies and you've used the branches and the red berries, these aren't red, these are still green, they're not quite ripe, but you've decorated with a female holly plant. The female holly plants produce the flowers that will produce the fruit. Well, here in our rock garden, we have a plant that has yet another type of flower. This is the violet, and we've got several down here in our garden. You can see the little low-growing plants here, and violets in the springtime will produce a very showy little pale purple flower or several of those and they're, they're quite attractive in the shaded parts of our garden. But those flowers aren't very fertile. They produce very little seed. And if you've ever grown violets, then you probably know that violets are quite prolific. In fact, if you look around here, we've got sort of a little ground cover of violets beginning to get started. So you may be wondering, well, if those flowers in the springtime aren't very fertile and they don't produce very many seed, how do we get so many violets? Well, the answer is violets have two types of flowers, and you can see some of those right down here. These are known as Cleistogamous flowers, these two little bud-like structures right here, and they look nothing like the flowers that are produced in the springtime on the very same plant. In fact, I bet 99% of people who have violets have never noticed the Cleistogamous flowers that they produce in the fall. Right down here, we've got a young one that's just coming on, a little Cleistogamous flower bud. And Cleistogamous flowers, which are very fertile, have both male and female parts inside, they never really open. They just stay closed. They fertilize themselves and they produce copious amounts of seeds, lots of seeds. In fact, there are several seeds inside here that are ripening and pretty soon will burst forward. If you look right over here, you can see a Cleistogamous flower that has already burst open and flung its seeds everywhere. So that's how we get those ground covers of violets with these Cleistogamous flowers. Well, now that you have this information, you can take advantage of it. And for instance, if you only wanted to maintain one small clump of violets in your garden, all you would have to do would be to come out in the fall, September and October, and just pinch away those Cleistogamous flowers before they open up and fling those seeds. And then you can have a nice, tidy, attractive single planting of violets.